Hi everyone, this is Julio Rodriguez and welcome to Motorola Solutions Live. I want to thank you for joining me as we come to you live on Fridays at 11 a.m. Eastern Time. And I think it's 8 o'clock on the West Coast and 4 o'clock over in the UK. So uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening to everyone that's joining me today. Very glad to have you with us. We've got some great information coming to you live. Um, here in just a couple of minutes, we're going to have Tyson Haddon and uh, Don Cornett join us to talk about Ally Incident Management. So it's part of the ecosystem, does a lot of really great things when it comes to the actions that we need to take when it when uh, incidents pop up. So it's a it, it's a nice extension of what we normally talk about with uh, video security access control and communication stuff. So as always, as people are coming in, um, please let us know where you're watching from. If you're one of my fellow Motorola's, I think we're up to um, over 18,000 coworkers that uh, that we have here at Motorola Solutions worldwide. So go ahead and type in where you're come, where you're watching from, um, what area you work in. If you're one of our technology partners, if you're one of our channel partners, or if you're one of our end users, we're we're happy to see you and want to engage with you and, t and talk to you about all of this. Um, so while we get started, while we wait for everybody to start chiming in. Um, I did want to cover a couple of things that we have coming up. Um, as you know, GSX is coming up here in just a couple of days. So I, we're going to all be flying out here pretty soon. And let me see if I can get the uh, screen going here. There we go. So Motorola Solutions is going to be in booth 3505. And we're going to have everything from a Vigilon on on-premise uh, Unity. Get the word. I've got to get the words right. A Vigilon on-premise Unity. We're going to have uh, Alta Cloud Video and Access Control. We're going to have Pelco uh, Video Security. Uh, got to see their Video Tech Explosion Protected cameras. They're they're just crazy amazing to look at. And uh, we're going to have Calypsa uh, Analytics. We're going to have our two-way radio communication stuff there. All kinds of great technology that you can spend, um, you know, a, a good amount of time and, and not be able to get through all of it. So we want to make sure that you plan ahead. Um, if you want to get a booth meeting set up and you want to see a specific technology, go ahead and reach out to me. Let me know. And we'll make sure that we get that coordinated with you so that you have enough time and enough uh, dedicated resources for people to have that conversation with you. Because we want to be able to engage with you and talk to you about what, what you're interested in at the booth and typically with these trade shows um if you've been to any of them especially at the motorola booth it gets very very busy we'll be three or four people deep um, at each one of our booths all day long and we want to make sure that we get to everyone so absolutely reach out to us ahead of time and uh, let us know if you'd like to um, spend some time looking at a specific technology and we'll make sure that happens for you so it looks like we've got some people already chiming in let's see who's uh who's with us today Jeff from Florida. Justin, good to see you. Greg Wilson's watching from DC. Nicole, good morning from Utah. Tim's watching from Chandler, Arizona. Good to see you, Tim. Lisa's watching from Arkansas. We've got Robbie, channel account manager from Utah as well. We'll say I'm watching from Texas. Good to see you. Jeff, good to see you. Let's see who else we have joined. Steve Milsk from Michigan. Matando watching from South Africa. Thank you for joining. I appreciate it. Um, one of the other things that I uh, wanted to talk about real quick uh, is the Motorola Solutions Careers page. So this is one of the things that we talk we, we talk about every week. Look at job openings. I see, you know, half the people on uh, LinkedIn are hiring. The other half are looking for careers. So I always like to talk about just for a minute about what we have at Motorola Solutions from a career standpoint. So in just our regions alone, I know this is a little bit small on the screen. Um, overall, we have 627 job openings, and that's everything from uh, looks like an incident commander position, incident command coordinator in California to a learning support administrator in Poland. So it is across the board, across the entire spectrum of job opportunities and career paths that you can have at Motorola Solutions. And 
in North America alone, there's 242 job openings. So get to the careers page, upload your resume. If you have any questions on these opportunities, um, you know, feel free to reach out. I've already talked to a couple of people over the past week uh, about opportunities that we have. More than happy to connect you with um, anyone that I may know in our uh, giant network of people here at Motorola Solutions. And finally, one piece of information that I forgot to tell you guys about last week when we were uh, looking at the Vigilon, new su the Vigilon support site is that we now have this piece of infor critical information here is that on every um, page, I'm sorry, at the, on the front page of our career site, or yeah, can't talk today, of our support site at uh, support.vigilon.com, we actually have current hold times. So if you want to see if it's going to be faster to do a live chat, the text message, SMS response, WhatsApp, or a phone call. Right now you can see the phone calls are about a five minute wait, but live chat is zero minutes. So you can get a really quick response on there. So those are the updates that I have for today. Let's see who else is joining us. Let me turn off this banner here real quick. There we go. Let's see Steve. Richard's watching in Montreal, Canada. Thanks for joining. Tim watching from Dubai. Someone from Houston. And Fox watching from Morocco. Thanks for joining. So guys, uh, don't want to take up any more time with uh, with the news and the, the all the other pieces of information. There's going to be some really great things that you're going to see that I can't talk about yet because we haven't made the announcement um, at GSX. Some new of uh, some new video analytics that are going to help uh, tie into the X or the product ecosystem. And uh, it's going to be really interesting. I think the announcement's coming out tomorrow or sorry, this afternoon, and then we'll have it ready to go so you can come see it at GSX. So outside of that, um, let me go ahead and bring on uh, Tyson and Don. Good morning, guys. Good morning. So Tyson, if you could uh, give us a little bit of background on yourself and uh, the product that we're going to be talking about today. Yeah, sounds good. So uh, my name is Tyson. I, I live out of Salt Lake, um, Utah. I've been with Motorola since 2019. Um, yes. And from that time I started as a sales rep for the product ally and kind of moved forward. And now I'm a business developer, business development manager for safety reimagined. And one of the things that I really handle is, uh, selling ally and as well as kind of managing and supporting that product. Gotcha. So if you can share your screen, um, yeah. give us a little bit of background on what ally is, because most of our audience tends to be in the video security and access control side or on the two-way radio side. This is something that sits actually right, right in between those two. Yeah, absolutely. So let me share my screen real quick. Can you guys see? Looks like it's loading. Yes. It's coming okay. Through. Yeah. So a little bit about Ally and kind of where it came from. So uh originally it was an acquisition just like many things that we've seen across motorola where um it was spillman technologies in the past and from mm -hmm. that we were we essentially were the cadillac of cad rms so computer-aided dispatching and records management for law enforcement okay. and so we saw that we had kind of this uh what would happen was like we'd have police chiefs that would retire or people that were prior law enforcement leave and go into the public uh and kind of go into the i would say private security side and they wanted to use our products on the private security side but the problem was the price tag and you know having on-prem servers it did way more than they what they really needed mm -hmm. and so then we created um ally essentially for those teams it kind of a, cl a light a cloud-based light version of those larger systems. So like with this slide here, it basically kind of breaks out that we're cloud-based. The things that we do and we do extremely well is dispatching. And we kind of do that by way of, it kind of gives visual workflows for a dispatcher at a security office or in a, um, you know, in a sock or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, as well as records management. So tracking things, whether that's lost and found to name records to offenders people that are no longer allowed on premises 
and then as well our incident records. So if they have crimes committed, and those are the things that they really do need to track. Um, and so that's something we do extremely well, make it very simple and easy for them. And then on top of that, let them be able to run analytics to make sense of the data. So that's, that's kind of really the kind of the high level of what Ally is and, and what it does. Okay, so from from a Motorola product offering standpoint, the the law enforcement uh, public safety version of this type of software would be our Command Central. So it would be Spillman Flex. I mean, oh, there's P1 Flex. CAD and then Spillman Flex as well. Okay. Yeah. So that would be kind of the the counterparts. So this is the lighter version of those products. And this would be an enterprise version. Typically, what customers uh, do we see this applying? You know, this type of uh, software going for? Yeah, so the verticals are really vast because we really are working with security. So it's really built for security. I would say our top verticals by far are healthcare, um, education, manufacturing. Um, but I would say really across the board, we, I mean, with all of our customers, we're anywhere from, you know, gaming to stadiums to really anywhere that needs and has physical security. Okay. Yeah. Um, I like to, I'm not going to be big on the slides, but this is kind of some of the main reasons why we have a lot of these security operations choose Ally. And, and really for the first, this is very intuitive. It's very simple and easy. Um, that's really how we built it because we knew, we, we know that if it wasn't simple and easy, then they're not going to use it. You know, it's, it's going to be, we want to make it, for lack of better words, dummy proof, just so that it's you know quick, easy drop downs. They can they can do it mobile, so they could do it from like an Ion radio device, or they could do it from a desktop, a laptop, all being able to have the same functionality in very mm -hmm. just simple, easy, um, taking care of it. So that's one of the big pieces. The next is kind of the instant communication across devices, and really that's powered through. Motorola's ecosystem and orchestrate. Um, mm -hmm. So, so what we're going to be able to do is tie, and I'm sure for those that have seen um, this podcast in the past, is everything that we connect to and Ally being a part of that. And so, whether it be our radios, our access control, our video, we're going to be able to connect that all um, through orchestrate um, and connect that to Ally. So really great if they have parts of our ecosystem and so we've seen it with customers or you know that may already have our video or access control and now add ally or because of ally being able to add other things like video access control in our in our communications as well right and and don feel free to chime in here but it sounds like this was one of the big pieces that we wanted to start connecting better to video and access control with especially with orchestrate was that the kind of thought behind putting these together so absolutely early on? ally was one of the original uh, when we launched we did moto turbo radio vigilon video and ally that, that was the kind of the cornerstone if you will with uh, our first initial launch those were the th first three pieces that we brought in because we saw the the connection between as tyson said a lot of you know security operations have radio have video and also need that incident management uh records keeping capability that that ally brings to the to the table gotcha and, and tyson when we see people moving to a system like this because this is you know got all kinds of capabilities to it what are they typically using before they move to this for incident management and record keeping is it like spreadsheets or yeah you know, what's normally the mechanism yeah. Yeah, for the longest time, it was pen and paper. So I, I, I met it like uh, several customers that had these detailed log books that were just, you know, they had 50 of these different books that they had filled out, whether that's just their daily logs, their, you know, their, their typical things that they're doing every single day. Um, now people have moved a little bit more, a little bit better towards maybe Google Docs or like Excel spreadsheets and things like that. Mm -hmm. But but the problem with that still is, you know, lack of reporting, being able to find things. And so we have a lot of issues. So I'd say the majority, that's where they're at, is, is using kind of like a pen and paper method. Gotcha. Or even if they're putting it in a spreadsheet, it's still disconnected and you, you can't quantify a lot of the data. Yeah, absolutely. And so that's, 
Yeah, and say like that's kind of the last point. And this one, I would say, out of every customer, this is where you know it kind of is the return on investment for them is now being able to create really simple, easy analytic reports where they can you know run statistics and make sense of the data. Because in all reality, that's what the security teams need to do. Is number one, you know record those incidents, those crimes or whatever's happening, but now being mm -hmm. able to report that to, you know, their leadership to show, hey, these are the things that we've done. Maybe they weren't, you know, like when it comes to what we can do is essentially break out their dailies. So everything that they do on a daily basis. So it shows everything that they're accomplishing, plus, mm -hmm. you know, the larger maybe crimes or incidents that they see. And so it just really helps justify having them justify their workforce, hopefully right. justify, you know, hiring budgets and things like that. So that's, that's really, really uh, powerful. Gotcha. Um, but yeah, what I could do, I think I'll jump into the demo. I can yeah. jump right into our product now. That's exactly um, what I was going to ask. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to say, I, I think that'll probably be the most helpful for everybody. So this is cloud-based. So you're in a, you're not loading software. This is just a browser that you're in. Right, now. right. And that's something that's been fantastic, especially when it comes to IT. You know, that's always, I think, an issue is, you know, how are we going to, you know, download different things onto their computers, laptops, or their devices. And with it being cloud-based, any web-enabled device can use it. So so with that, all they need is this their URL and their their specific logins, and then they'd have access to the full system. Um, so it's something that's been it, it helps with IT and it makes things go a lot quicker because for them, all they got to do is make sure that this can go through their firewall and they're they're ready to go. So um, you guys can see my screen, right? Yes. Okay. Perfect. So. I'll kind of give you kind of like the bird's eye view high level um, and what we would typically show, you know, our customers when it comes to Ally. And so this is the Ally home screen or the dashboard. Mm -hmm. um, and what we do is we, we essentially, one of the customizations that we'll do with Ally is we'll tailor it to every user. So whether you're a security officer and your job is only to fill out incident reports and maybe fill out a daily log, if that's the case, when they log in, the only buttons that they will have is the incident button and their daily log button. So making okay. it really simple and easy for them. In this case, I'm a you know a super user, so I have everything turned on. I have every module. But um, yeah, just like that for them, it would be very simple. They log in, they would be able to see like their active items, things that they're currently working on. And it's all hyperlinked. So if they were assigned this vandalism incident, they could pull it up. It's going to have all of that information. And they could also see you know, their workflows, because that's always important, see that it's been reviewed and approved by their, their supervisor. Um, but if it wasn't, they could easily go in, make their edits, make their changes. And really, I mean, quite simply, that's what we're doing is giving them easy forms that they can fill out with drop down menus where they can add attachments, they can add their narratives, um, really just kind of finishing up the story. So when you talked about, so this is an incident report, and then you talked about workflows, this is different than the uh, workflows that we talk about with orchestrate. Yeah, or yeah, yeah. That, so or is it connected? It's a little, it's a little bit different. So, kind of to give the story, I, I, I sometimes like to talk about it like this: is you know, like a typical security incident. So, say we're at a security operation center, and you know, before orchestrate, before a lot of the analytics that we now have, it would be, and I would say, like with uh, with a vigilon, you know, we would have security maybe at that center watching cameras and they would maybe notice, oh, there's someone loitering on a staircase. They would see that, they would pick up their radio, communicate to their teams to see who was closest. They'd go take care of, you know, let that person know they can't be there anymore. And if there was any issue, whether, you know, they were smoking and there was something, you know, maybe something that we need to track, mm -hmm. um, then they would fill out a report. So they'd come back, fill out a report. All of that is kind of your standard, your kind of your standard operating procedure in like an incident. It all could change from 
what was seen, but it's all very similar. Where now with Orchestrate, right, we're going to have with the analytics, with our camera systems, we're going to notice the loitering and start the workflows where we, you know, drag and drop if then these statements happen. So if we have this loitering, we want it to notify our radio system and then we want it to notify Ally. So what it's doing is that whole flow is being done is being automated. So okay. yeah, the loitering happens, it's notifying radios automatically and it's creating an event into our ally system which will create the record. Um, so <laughs> instead of having to do all those things kind of manually, it's going to automate automate all of that. And so that workflow would be done essentially in our in our dispatch, but yeah, be, being able to create an incident right from from orchestrate. Gotcha. And this really drives consistency uh, across the board, right? So uh, with the automations of Orchestrate, as Tyson just talked about, consistent response every time. Uh, drop downs that Tyson shows, consistent response. So that way your officers are uh, always trying to, you know, they're not having to guess of which words to put in to make sure that the reporting are coming in, those pieces. It, it's all consistent, right? It's the consistency across that entire incident uh, that we're striving to get to as well. Right, because you, you mentioned loitering and sometimes, you know, if you're if you're manually trying to figure out if someone's been loitering, the, the stopwatch starts as soon as you notice someone there and they could have been there for 10 minutes already with video analytics taking care of that piece of it you say i want to know if someone's been in here or if two people have been here for five minutes or more now that consistency is yes they at five minutes the process is going to automate yep. kick off and help you get that more consistent uh yeah loitering license plate um beam breaking anything on the analytics side you think about officers that go out uh, and tyson laid the use case of before watch the video wall they were loitering pick up the radio start to communicate officers got to remember dispatch has got to remember oh let's go create a case uh let's fill in the information and so a lot of that manual step is being taken away or we're trying to automate so that way you can get that consistency uh and and lessen the workload of those officers so now it's a license plate comes in, you don't have to remember to go create a case. It's already, and Tyson will show us this in just a little bit, it's already been pushed into Ally uh, from mm -hmm. an orchestrate perspective. And it's very simply going in, finding it, and start working that case. Right. And and not only does the consistency go up, your response time goes down because now we're getting this automated alert. It's, it's already getting very you further much. along in the process. And by the time you're documenting it the radio call has gone out to get somebody to respond to this incident and that's going to help improve overall outcomes from from just having these things working together in, an, in second saves lives right and that's kind of i mean that's kind of been our mantra here at motorola is that we always look to kind of shave off as much that response gap that you talked about shrinking that response gap gets it as close to near real time and you will change the outcome of that event. Right. Yeah. So so to kind of piggyback on that, th I jumped into our dispatch module. So all of these have up, I mean, we could spend a good amount of time in each one of these modules. But to kind of go high level, the records, anything, I think I kind of talked about it before, we want to track from vehicles to parking passes to lost and found properties things like that name records mm -hmm. um and so into our dispatch here really this is seen a, this is kind of where all of these align and come together and what this is used for is essentially for you know someone at a security operation center or a dispatch center where they're going to be able to visually see their workflows who's available who can be assigned but then on top of that, as you can see the top left corner here, this is where we're going to see those analytic events. So when something comes through Orchestrate and maybe has notified radios and already done its flow, we can also see it um, on the dispatch side so they can view that alert. So mm -hmm. it'll pull up information on that alert. So it'll say, you know, loitering, where it was, any type of information necessary for it. 
And so if it is an issue and it's something that we do want to acknowledge, then we acknowledge the alert, pushes it forward and creates that record. If it is maybe a false, maybe it is, you know, was a non-issue and we don't need a record for it, then we could just cancel it out as well. So right from here, um, we'd be able to acknowledge, cancel those reports. And what it does is it, like I said, like we've talked about, is it automates that report. So for like a dispatcher or for an officer, instead of them having to go back and remember anything, if a dispatcher can, they can assign an officer to it or, or a security officer to it. They can update, add comments to it. And all that does throughout the whole process is timestamps everything and just creates a really robust report for them. Right. So that was going to be my next question because I see the time ticking away in all mm -hmm. of these boxes. So it's it's also time stamping when it gets moved from one to the other, when somebody responds, when somebody makes it, changes the status of it and when they ultimately close it out. Yeah, exactly. And so that's been something that's been huge because one, it gives a really accurate report. They can see, you know, it took three minutes, 25 seconds to get from this point of the building to the other. Um, so they have really good reporting, but also right. kind of goes back to the analytics piece too, is now they can make sense of the data and see how long is it taking them to take care of XYZ calls or, you know, how long is it taking for us to dispatch someone? So it gives them just more analytics, more things to help them make sense of the data um, and, and hopefully protect their, their outfit a little bit better. And some of those data pieces that we've seen uh, organizations use, as Tyson talked about, is how long in route? How long does it take to do an incident? Do I need more staff? Do I need more capabilities right within my organization? So you're using it as a uh, kind of an ROI, if you will, um, and a justification. If you get into the capabilities of uh, what we've seen out of some of these organizations of reporting on a quarterly or a half year or yearly basis, um, mm -hmm. this type of data is at your fingertips now. And so you can actually start to make justifications or alter your operations where maybe before you thought, oh, wow, I needed a bunch of officers over here, but it goes to show maybe that wasn't the case. Uh, maybe you need officers or uh, security detail or whatever over in another area as well. Right. And and what uh, Tyson's got up here on the screen right now, this would show, you know, where do we need more boots on the ground? Is is there a hot spot of activity at certain times? Like is Wednesday nights or Saturday nights, you know, busier or we get more incidents over here and that can adjust the, you know, scheduling and shifts for the security officers to be in the right places that we know yep. things are going to happen because we, we now have that data of where things are happening. So yeah, I saw yeah. the records yep. of where things are happening. If there's specific vehicles involved, specific people involved and where they're at. So, you know, those pieces of the puzzle plus the time that those things are there. And now you can put the right resources in the right places. Or justification, right? It's, it's mm -hmm. to the, what you said, resources. Maybe you just need more cameras. Maybe it's more boots on the street. However you want to address the the issue, it's it's the the data behind it that Tyson talked about. It's it's at your fingertips now, right? It's is this is how you're going to go and and really manage some of your organization on a on an incident and those capabilities. And then he'll get in and show you some of the other, uh, you know, think about a, a litigation case that shows up two years in the rear. Uh, you have that capability as well, right? So I'm not I'm gonna I'm not gonna keep talking about use cases, Tyson's all over the place trying to <laughs> talk about this here. as we're talking, right? But uh, we'll let him go through the flow. But it, it's really around, uh, you know, as, as he's showing here, it's uh, consistency, trying to automate, and then that reporting capability. Couldn't have said it better myself, honestly. That's, uh, that's perfect. No, I, I would say, yeah, I mean, when it comes to meeting with customers and, and security operations, and I think all of this makes a whole lot of sense because everybody really need they understand and they know this is something they need to be doing, mm -hmm. and they are doing it, but are they doing it the most effective, you know, the best way possible? 
most likely not. And so then when we show them, I mean, you know, obviously filling out reports is great and they're going to have, so this is a huge part of it too, is being able to find those results, right? So in any of our records, events, any of these pieces, what we have done is created a filtering system on the top to help us find our results a lot quicker. So like in my account here, I have almost 800 results, but if we wanted to see you know, we're searching for a specific type of incident. We're looking for trespassing. We mm -hmm. can search that. It's going to filter it out. So from that 800, now we have 182. If we know when it was reported or roughly or a dynamic search, we know it happened sometime this year. They could now go in and say, you know, this last full year, let's search that. Filters it to 17. So that could be a lot more palatable to find if we know officers assigned. So it really helps them find it for litigation purposes, right? If they ever need to find a report. And, and what's great is as long as they're a customer, it's a software as a service, as long as they've been a customer, we will keep their data. Um, so essentially we, you know, we've, I think this product has been around for about, I think 14 years now. And so mm -hmm. our customers that have been with us for 14 years could pull up 14 years on the day their reports. So if they ever had, like we talked about, you know, a, a legal case coming through, they'd have that, be able to easily find it and be able to pull up that report and have, you know, whether it's pictures, whatever it is with that, um, with that incident record and see everything about it. So again, they're, they're protecting themselves. So and they could include in this incident report pictures of the things that got broken, uh, injury document injuries. What about uh, video from, uh, you know, yeah, we, we can cameras. do video. There's, there's a little bit of a limitation we can do, uh, per record. I think right now it's set to 25 megabytes, so it's not large. Um, but mm -hmm. we've had ways where we could link, um, like you could add like links to videos and things like that. Um, but for sure, pictures, documents, any type of attachments you could add to this um, and it will be saved. And so they have uh, technically unlimited storage with that. Um, it's just a little bit of a limitation on every record, essentially. Gotcha. Now, if a organization has some sort of, a, you know, policy on how long that they keep records and stuff like that, can that be adjusted to meet with, you know, if they say five years or one year that they keep records of video but they'll keep track of the incident that can be managed yeah absolutely so yeah what's great about it too and and i would say similar system there's not we don't have many there's a lot of competition um but the ones that we do have some of their biggest shortcomings is everything that they have to do like whether it's uh customizations or audit histories and things like that they have mm -hmm. to reach out to the their that company for them to do it for them where in our case we're able to we give them access for all of that so yeah so when it comes to if they we we have some customers that want to delete uh after <laughs> we actually just recently signed one that after two years they want to get rid of basically, basically purge any of those records that's their right. that's their mo Protection that's what policy, they want to yeah. do yeah. And so that's what they do. And so they have that access. So they're going to be able to go in and quickly any of the like privileges plus anything they're going to make on that side, they could be able to run through their admin portal. So and they'll be trained. Um, and one of the good things, too, that I think is it been really helpful for all of our customers for training purposes is we have this really comprehensive help tool. Mm -hmm. So whether, you know, if it's admin or if it's just someone that needs to fill out a report, whatever it may be, everything is going to be in here. It's just a really good knowledge base. But say, for instance, like uh, I need to fill out an incident report. I've never been trained on Ally. I just was given a login. Right. We, we that never happens. Line. Yeah, that, that never happens. <laughs> yeah. So we say, it, you know, in the off chance that ever was to happen they could type in their help tool and mm -hmm. they'll have documents. We have some videos, but we also have these little drop down menus. So we use walk me. So just walks them through the full process. Oh, that's uh, cool. Yeah. So clicks, you know, point click. And so that's something that's been huge for all of our customers as well, just for the training purposes. We're trying to make it very simple. 
I think we have with um, just the UI and everything like that. But on top mm -hmm. of that, we have like tools that walk them through the full process, let them know that they have to fill out right required fields and like add attachments. And so it's not just like a video where they're following along. It right. literally is doing it with them. So Launch now into the system. Yeah, That's they're, nice. They're ready, ready to rock from that point. So we've actually got a question from uh, Jeff Silverberg. He wants to know is orchestrate in the cloud with Ally or is it a separate install at the customer site? So orchestrate is also in the cloud. Yeah. So they're both cloud services. Um, right. They require separate activations and separate logins. They're not correct. part of the same correct. one login. Correct. Not yet. Not part as of, of today. <laughs> yeah, as of today, not yet. Uh, but they are right. Uh, as, as we acquired Spillman Ally, we brought its cloud capabilities on. Uh, Orchestrate has its cloud capabilities. And so, uh, yeah, they're both in the cloud. They're both underneath Motorola Watch, uh, if you will, on the IT side and the, the security side of it. Uh, but they are separate, um, I'll say cloud instances within the US. Right. And there's no on site customer software installation. This is all browser based in the cloud. Both of them are browser based. Both of them, you uh, you tie the clouds together, and that's what our team does on the back end. It's fairly straightforward um, of how to go do it. Uh, we've made some improvements. You can actually got a video. Customers can go do it. It's fairly simple, straightforward. Go go put in a few pieces of information, and it, it attaches as itself. But yeah, it, it's those those two can communicate uh, cloud instances across. Thanks. Yeah, and, and one of the things I will say, uh, starting you know years ago, when we first showed Ally, and with it being cloud-based, you know, and like that was always one of the it could have been an issue coming up was the fact that it's in the cloud and it doesn't have you know servers or you know on-prem servers or anything like that. Mm -hmm. um, and we saw that a little bit uh, starting out, but to now I think everyone is really. Um, kind of been extremely open to the cloud. I, I haven't had in the last three years, I don't think I've had anyone had an issue with cloud anymore, which which is really good. You know, it's it's been uh, uh, extremely helpful for us on our side. Yeah, yeah with, with video and access control going that route, it's it's really helped, you know, the adoption of this, uh, this type of uh, application. Yeah, I was gonna say any, it, it, just by nature of what we saw over the last few years with, you know, I'll say the word COVID again, uh, but uh, over those years, right? People were instantly thrusted into remote. Yeah. Uh, I mean, this was a go log in. <laughs> I mean, it was, here's your browser, go log in. We, we, it's kind of, we were prepped for it, right, if you will, right? And so it, the, the latest pieces of it is like, yeah, there was no hiccups whatsoever uh, moving forward. It was literally just point your browser to the right area, go home, use your own PC if you needed to do, phone, whatever it is, and start logging in and do the same reporting. For sure. Yeah. So so Tyson, can can you just give us a uh, go through this the, just more of the major pieces? I know we we yeah. get, you know, we find a little interesting tidbit here. We tend to go down the rabbit hole because that's yeah, yeah. what we all love to do with incidents and case studies and use cases. But like there I know I don't want to miss, you know, a, a major section of what this system can do because just like a Vigilant and all of our other products, there's so many things that it can do. It's just a matter of what's the best application for it. Uh, can you for walk sure. us through some of that? Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, like, like we kind of talked about, I mean, you could spend, we could spend an hour on each one of these, but kind of high level, I would say the most important things that we, we run into uh, with our customers is one is obviously incident reports as we kind of showed you that just filling out these forms, having a, you know, an easy place to put those. Mm -hmm. Another one is our daily logs. Cause this is again, something that they're doing every single day for security right. operations there. Yeah. It, they might have, depending where they're at, they might have multiple incidents a day. Some of them maybe one or two a week, but something that every security operations, if they have physical security, what they are all doing is is their daily logs. So um, I had a we had a customer in New York who they tracked their daily logs on like basically these like little notepads, and he had 
I think it was like close to 25 stacked in a row. And wow. every day he was busting out the ruler and he was, ch- you know, and he was the one to do it. And this was the head of security. And, you know, he's like, it's, if they ever need the information, they have it, but to find it was a nightmare. And also if he ever took vacation or anything, it was not getting done um, wow. the way that he would like. So now we kind of just took that to the 21st century where he, you know, creates his drop down menus, builds it out how mm-hmm. he wants and says, okay, you know, we're going to have this officer do something, you know, just a typical door check or a parking lot check, add mm-hmm. some notes, add the site client if necessary area and it'll even use their device location so this is my home office here so it's getting my lat long they could take a tat or they we can add attachments so that's been one where if you know if they're doing like a parking lot check they'll take a picture of the parking lot so they just to have (laughs) the if they Mm -hmm. ever needed to they could pull up what we you know they can prove they can show what their parking lot was looking like during that time Right. So if they're um, doing this from a mobile device that has, you know, uh, location features in it, it would pinpoint, it, it would drop a pin on the map where they where they were at. Yeah, for sure. So this, sorry if this looks a little bit uh, clunky, but so it's all screen adaptive. So it works extremely, like on our Ion devices, it looks really mm-hmm. pretty. But like, I mean, even just on like a an iPhone, so this is what it would look like to them and uh, or like a Let's see, like just a, any type of tablet. So it's all screen adaptive. And so, they, yeah, they could do it right from that device. And mm-hmm. and the whole system will change a little bit the UI or kind of how it looks for them. But everything that they could do before, they could do it mobile as well. So, yeah, so that's that's been a big part, I would say, our, our daily logs. Because now, again, we can go on our reports and do some other analytics like our daily log and shift reports. So now they can see, you know, if they wanted to see on a specific day or specific officers, what's been going on, they Mm -hmm. can quickly like query that kind of information. They could run statistics so they could see, you know, this year, what have we done and just get quick counts. And again, just another great way to make sense of the data, find it and then run statistics on those. So that return on investment for them. Gotcha. Um, other big pieces and surprisingly is, is just our records module. So, I mean, this, they can put anything in here from names. So if that's their customers or it's their employees, however, they want to track that, um, Mm -hmm. we have like offenders lists. So we have, say for instance, um, we have some, some big churches that what they'll do is they'll have, you know, maybe they have patrons that are no longer allowed to be at their church and so they actually use this that uh almost as like a baseball card so they could have kind of printouts of who's no longer allowed um you know to to be able to see or be able to be you know on our premises anymore things like that Mm -hmm. so just ways to protect a little bit better easily search too so if they do run into someone they could find it um one of the things that i that we I think shows very well is say for instance we have a name record uh so i'll just pull up this one this is a in our dashboard here i had a be on the lookout for this person and what you can do is you can do a lot of cool things like adding custom tags so they can you know we can see as soon as we pull this person up that this is a violent offender they're trespassed they're no longer allowed maybe a picture of them some identification Mm -hmm. But on top of that, anytime we're creating a record, we're creating an incident, we're creating any type of information, we can involve them with other records. And so what this does is it builds an extremely like thorough case for every, for, for um, whether it's again, a, a person offender or even just like an area. So again, helps us make sense of the data. And so they could pull up this person and see all of the incidents this guy has been a part of you know, from trespassing to a lot of vandalisms, things like that. So they're going to know, you know, if they do run into this person as a security operator, they're going to know that this is probably, you know, what they're going to be dealing with. Right. Um, And I saw on there that sometimes he was, or most of the time he was an offender, but sometimes he was a victim. Sometimes mm -hmm. he was just engaged. So it's got all the different varieties of situation that would normally happen with somebody that could be a student that's there, you know, at, at first was there, for valid reasons and then was engaged with 
certain things or became an offender. Now they're no longer, but it, it, you can see that, that progression of, uh, of information. Yeah, for sure. And so this has been really cool for, I would say, K through 12, even like, and as well as our, our college or our higher education customers, because it kind of builds a case for them. For, so if they had like disciplinary action on a student, it, it's mm -hmm. built the case for them so they could pull up everything this, this student has been a part of. Um, one of the cool things too, and, and this is something that surprisingly goes, shows well, with our customers is, you know, now we have this, we can see everything where they connect, show secondary right. levels. So, I mean, to go back to the COVID piece, uh, there was a time where we were, you know, we were looking for contact tracing, you know, what students were in classes with kids that, you know, or, or you know, that had COVID or had tested positive. And right. we actually had a lot of, uh, schools use this for that where they attached all the students to each class and so they could see which ones and who need to be contacted um and then but i mean this is typically just to help them make sense of the data see who he's been running around with or who he's victimized in the past and so they love that i would say our security teams love this because if they can they would love to do their own investigations if they can a right. lot of times they can't uh, just because of the the technology that's there, but this gives them a lot of. Um, a, so they like don't have to stick to pieces that. of paper on the on the whiteboard like we see on right. TV. They they right. actually can do the the thing here. That's that's yeah. awesome. Yeah, so exactly. Jose has a question real quick, and I think um, we I may know the answer is is the information about the incident um, is it admissible in court? And I think that's going to just really depend on the legalities involved. And this this is just a yeah company or enterprise documentation of it whether that documentation is admissible is that's going to be up to the attorneys yeah yeah you would be right there yeah and so one, th one thing i'll add this is a full records based in the back right so anything that you touch change you will keep um as uh, an audit so to that Somebody point in, in the in the standard kind of practice if you will um they would want to see all of this information. And so you would have a little bit more validity of saying this could stand up. Um, right. Not saying that it will, not saying it won't. <laughs> it just, you have a much more chance of saying it will. Right. Because yeah, so this yeah. is based off of that public safety version of what would normally be used in, in this case. Absolutely. Um, okay. So Jeff has a question, um, more of a technical radio question. If the staff is using a Moto Turbo R7, can they get these as job tickets and reply? And would an emergency activation create an incident? So, uh, and Don, you can help me out with this, but I would say the emergency activation, yes, I believe that will come across um, as long as that goes, if, if it can communicate with orchestrate, then we would be able to receive that. Right. Um, the job ticketing, not today, no. Mm -hmm. um, just because there's a little bit more involved, uh, there's gonna be a lot of like, there's gonna we would technically need you to fill out information with ally so with the r7s we wouldn't we wouldn't be able to do that and so it's more of initiation of 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 a process not necessarily being able to do that through the r7 but if you have an ion you have access to this entire right. system yeah exactly right. yep and to kind of go back to don's thing uh with with our auditing so i just quickly this was created by Jim. He added some information he, when he created it. I just went in and I added something to it. So it shows date, time, what the original value was and what the new value is. So if someone was to ever go in and delete things um, and change like a, a, a record, we're still gonna have what the original value was to the new value. So if someone was to delete video, picture or whatever we have attached, Mm -hmm. we will still have that so it's all audited and we even do a more extensive audit where they can see every click that any person has ever done in the system so and i think that helps a lot with any legal cases um, right that we're working on so what other uh, modules do we have yeah so um we kind of ran through the gambit records very big i would say property is something that's been really great for our security because they usually use it for like lost and found okay. um so they can be able to add things like you know an iphone that someone had left and they could quickly create a report about it 
And then the same thing what we can do too is we could actually enter custody. So we could actually, you know, if it was in a specific a specific bin or we're giving it back to the owner, like they now have proven, um, you know, that it's released to the owner. Oops. Okay. And what we can do is we could actually um, create like a transaction receipt. So that's mm -hmm. something that's been really big, just kind of to protect them as well. Is once we're you know we're showing that we're giving it back to them. You know we have our oh, nice. our customer. We can have us sign it, them sign it, and then we could even add it to the record. So yeah, scan that back into the the record. Yeah, for sure. So that's something that's been really. It's a little thing, but a lot of our security yeah. operations. I mean, those are thousand dollar iPhones are a thousand bucks, so it's not like it's just a you know little cheapy thing. Yeah, for sure. So yeah, and that can and they could use it for lost and found. They could use it for their radio devices if they're giving things out to even just their own teams. Mm -hmm. They can use this to you know uh, search those items, see who's had it last, so we can see you know if we find a radio and we search. And so that's one of the cool things too is you could put a you can print a QR code, so you could put it on the back of a device. And so, say we find one of our radios just laying out, oh, we don't you know can asset it tag is. it that way. Yeah, they can just scan it, pull it up, and they could see, oh, this is Jim's, and he's probably going to get written up for leaving his radio out or, or whatever, right? So, a lot of great ways that they could use that. Dispatching, we showed that. So, our computer aided dispatching again is really just the workflows, events, anything we're trying to track. So. Incidents are important, call for services, those are our typical day-to-day -day things that we're working mm -hmm. on. But we also have things like maintenance records. Um, so if someone was to come up on a, you know, they have their eye on device and they come up to a leaky or like a leak from the roof and it's caused a puddle, they can take a picture of it, creating a maintenance ticket that can automate. So that's one of the cool things too. We do have like a notification center. So if, if any type of maintenance record cre is created, it could just send maintenance an email that this is what's going on. So some and good these events there. are customizable as well. Yeah. Yeah. So you, they can create those. Yeah. So we have uh, in their admin portal, they're going to be able to create notifications and kind of do if then statements. So in this case, if I, it, it could be like a, an incident record, for instance, if we want any incident record created by a security officer to notify their uh, supervisor when it's created, they could do mm -hmm. that. Or it could be if, you know, if we have, a large scale like a gang activity we want the admin wants to know as soon as that's created we want to know about it so yeah you can create all sorts of notifications for that um across the board and so they can kind of just build those out as they need it um so this can be used for everyone that's going to be touching a radio including facilities so it doesn't have to be just the security yeah, platform. yeah. We're also doing, like you said, the, the maintenance issue that's causing a potential safety issue can be ha both of those aspects can be handled through this. Yeah, exactly. This. Yeah, exactly. And then and then I think, again, it always goes back to now the reports they could see, you know, every time we've sent a report out to maintenance, you know, if we want to run statistics on those. And what's cool is when they create those, they can manually do it every time, but they can save mm -hmm. those reports dynamically. So now they just have a reports module that they can share to other teams. They can put it on their dashboard so it runs kind of in the background at all times, or they could just run those reports. So if we wanted to see this year's heat map. Can so they do it on a scheduled that. basis where it like kicks out a report once a week? Um, yeah, yeah, if they need to. Yeah, they could do that as well. Very so, cool. Yeah. But I, I think that's kind of high level. Again, like we yeah. could spend, I think in every module, we could spend a good amount of time. But yeah. I would that, high level. One of the last of... pieces, Tyson had it right there on his reports, is the Clary report. And so that's oh, a yeah. higher ed. Yeah. Uh, so Tyson, why don't you talk about that one real quick? Yeah, yeah. So this one's specific to higher education. But for those that don't know what a Clary report is, it's essentially a yearly kind of crime statistic report that they have to submit to the government, have to submit publicly as well. Mm -hmm. um, so, so, you know, you could pull up any, you know, any higher education for your student that's going there and see what's been going on for the last three years. It's just a really lengthy report of a lot of different statistics or a lot of different crimes that are being committed. And what you can do with Ally is it's going to be clearing clear. It's going to basically be 
doing its checks and balances and making sure that you know if these reports um, break the threshold that it should be required and and creates their clear report for them. Right. So what it'll do is it's just quick, simple, easy. They can see what years are good when they have valid reports and then those that aren't. So we could see that we have this status is needs a clarity location. So they all they need to know need to know is when they go into that report, make their edit. They're missing data that needs to be. Yeah, they're missing the included. data. And we had we add a little gold icon so they know which ones that they need for it to be um Ro ro uh, reported correctly so they could add that and then when it comes down to it once that's been changed it'll show whether it's good to go and when it is all they'd have to do is click on so we could see here for the last three years we're good so all they'd have to do is click generate report it creates it into a pdf format for them and as you can see it has the last three years on campus not on campus and all of the offenses that they require. So this has been huge for our um, our schools, our, our uh, higher education, because this is something that their Title IX officer, their heads of security are all working together and spending, yeah. can spend months on, on end to get and make sure that it's accurate because for every mistake, it's a hefty fine. For the last time I checked, it was around like fifty fifty thousand dollars per Clary fine. So, it, or and that's per, per mistake. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So it, it can be. I think it was like uh, I'm trying to remember which university, but a couple years ago, it was like two million dollars they had accrued in Clary report fines because wow. of uh, misreporting on it. So this just streamlines all that for them, and they can do their checks throughout the year and see and make sure that everything is filled out properly. Very cool. So last couple things. Um, this product is available through the Avigilon channel partners, correct? Yeah, yeah. It can be sold through the Avigilon, our Avigilon channel partners. Um, yeah, if you are if you can sell Motorola products across the line, you can sell Ally. Very cool. Well, Tyson, Don, thank you both for, uh, for joining today. This has been a lot of information, just like everything else that we have here in the product ecosystem. We could spend you know, a week and a month just going over the, the aspects of what, what these products can do. So I, I really appreciate you taking the time today. Yeah, no, thanks for having us. Our pleasure. All right. So everybody, that's all the time we have for today. Uh, we're right at time. Thank you again for joining me. Uh, and thanks to Tyson and Don for giving us that great feedback on the Ally Incident Management uh, product. Um, I know we're going to be having that in our booth at GSX. So that's booth 3505 at GSX in Dallas uh, starting next Monday. So we look forward to seeing you then. And uh, hopefully I'll have my phone out and be able to get some, at least some really cool videos of the product demos that we have out there. May be able to go live, depends on what the uh, connectivity is gonna be like. In the meantime, um, hope you have a great week and uh, we'll look forward to seeing you again soon. Thanks a lot.